Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And today, going to be doing my next mock draft as a part of the Mock Draft Monday series, where each Monday you get a mock draft from me. And we kind of use these mock drafts to kind of get a sense of what exactly is going on. Uh, if you haven't seen the last one, by all means, you can go check out that one. It's the introductory one. We go over the needs of the Cowboys, which we'll do in this one to see if they've changed go over that and you know also hey you know what prospects did we get in this go around so if that's stuff that you enjoy by all means make sure to like this video it doesn't take too long to do and it helps the channel out a lot in youtube's algorithm subscribe if you are new here i am trying to hit 10,000 youtube subscribers by the end of the year and your subscription would be greatly appreciated by doing so I will eat two of the world's hottest chips and that will be done live. So if you want to see that and me in pain, by all means subscribe and hit that notification bell, which is the most important thing of all, so you don't miss out on new content like this going forward. So without further ado, let's go ahead and readdress what are the needs of the Dallas Cowboys. So to start things off, we are very much aware that the offensive line has been a question mark. I did mention that the interior, specifically center and left guard, are places that the Cowboys need to improve. Now, I'm going to add another position group, and that is left tackle. I forgot to add that in the other one, and the reason that I decided to bring this up in these videos now is because the health of Tyron Smith is now a question mark, you know? Um, and considering the fact that you you don't really have that backup left tackle, yeah, you have Terrence Steele, but... You're going to need to draft someone that can play left tackle and stay there. I don't want Terrence Steele to be caught out there, you know, you know, struggling and all that other stuff. And, you know, he had moments where he looked solid, but, you know, you don't do that. And um, if I'm the Cowboys, you need to draft a left tackle prospect, possibly. But point being offensive line. Linebacker is a need. We've talked about it in the last video. You have four guys that are heading to free agency, and you're going to have only Micah Parsons and Jabril Cox. You probably bring back a one or two of those guys, but still you need to add another linebacker. Wide receiver is going to be a need. Same reasoning for linebacker. You have four free agents, and still the Cowboys haven't added anybody back, so there's that. Uh, safety is a need, but this can easily... Uh, not become a need if they bring back certain guys, uh, but I still think you draft a safety nonetheless, and kicker is a much needed position to fix up, but that's something they don't need to draft with, or they're going to do that, get the right guy. Secondary needs have not changed from the previous week, and that is tight end, edge rusher, and defensive tackle. The Cowboys, uh, they don't need to necessarily get the best uh in the draft like they don't need to hone in unless he's the best guy on the board but i will say that you can't get enough edge rusher and defensive uh, tackle um help and on the tight end front there are plenty of guys you can get in this draft that can justify you letting dalton schultz go so with those needs clarified and verified and you know some of the other secondary stuff that the cowboys can focus in the off season and possibly in the draft it's now time to go into the mock draft simulator on the draft network and I would highly recommend using them. I've had the best work with them and the amount of resources they have on that site is endless. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just saying that through my experience over the past couple of years doing these mock drafts. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to pick 24 in the 2.0 mock draft for the Dallas Cowboys. Tyler Linderbaum, center, Iowa. So this was an interesting draft, this go-around, because a lot of the prospects that I was looking at outside of center and guard actually went earlier. Trevor Penning, Nicholas Piet Fryer, uh, a couple of, and Kenyon Green, to say the least. All those guys went early. But Tyler Linderbaum was there at 24, and he was the best prospect on the board. So you, I had to take him. What you're getting in Tyler Linderbaum is a young 22 when he gets to this point in the draft and to the start of the season. Going to be 22-year-old that will be your solidified starter at center for years to come. 
He has a Pro Bowl type of potential, and he reminds me a lot of Jason Kelsey, not only with what experts are saying, but you know the vibe that I get from how he plays the position. It's eerily similar to him. And I think that you can't go wrong with this selection. I think that the Cowboys need to start by addressing this offensive line. And really, the question mark at center is not a good one. The center outside of your blind side blocker is the most important position to fix. The Cowboys have really been going through some guys at center ever since Travis Frederick retired. Joe Looney was okay, but Tyler Biata showed promise, but he has eventually, you know, kind of turned into a okay starter, but you can definitely do better. Um, Matt Farniak does have questions on whether or not he could be the guy, but I'm sick and tired of this question mark type of situation. I think you get a solidified starter at center and you don't look back. Uh, you know, this does not mean that the Cowboys should not try to go after a left guard in the following uh, round. I think that either way, you need to address this offensive line. And unfortunately, with how many tackles did go early, I had to go with Tyler Linderbaum as the last remaining offensive lineman prospect. who will help your offensive line become a lot better, but it's important that the Cowboys get a better offensive line coach. Uh, so, with that being said, Tyler Linderbaum was in fact the pick at number 24 so let's go ahead and head over to pick 56 which might surprise a couple of you guys Jalen Weidermeyer tight end Texas A&M so this is an interesting pick to say the least once again going with the best player available outside of need and the reasoning for taking the tight end this early is because there wasn't an offensive lineman prospect that justified doubling down. There was no real other guys at linebacker to take here with, that you could have gotten in the third round. But the reason you kind of think about going tight end early is depending on who the Cowboys like the most. Now, Jalen Weidermeyer is a guy similar to that of a Dalton Schultz. Why is that? Because... He's a very good vertical threat tight end, and I think that he has a higher ceiling than Dalton Schultz and even Blake Jarwin, to say the least. But the main thing that I'm worried about is his blocking ability. If I'm the Dallas Cowboys, you know, this is a guy that can come in, has a great work ethic, and can really benefit from a good tight end coach. Now, I don't know exactly what the Cowboys' plan will be at tight end, hence this you know, selection or really targeting of a tight end this early might go a completely different route. But um, depending on how the Cowboys tackle free agency, do not be shocked if they go wide receiver or tight end with that second pick, and they shouldn't be afraid to do so. You know, you have plenty of good prospects that can be taken, and this is going to be similar to how in the first round, you're probably going to end up having to take someone that might be a second round, early second round selection uh, in the first round, because you're afraid you might not get them. Uh, and that's the the con of having a late round pick. But I really like Jalen Weidermeyer. I want someone that can come in and really take the top off a of defense, and he can do that. Uh, and, you know, we kind of got a sense of if you can bring in a guy like a Dalton Schultz and give him the opportunity to really do his thing, you're going to end up having a very good uh, opportunity to have a better and efficient offense. Like I said, and I'm going to reiterate this, Jalen Weidermeyer has all the tools to be a successful receiving tight end in this league, and he definitely can be one of the better ones. But again, the concerns are the blocking, and if you can fix that up, that's cool with me. But I would rather have that be a primary issue than, um, you know, having someone that can't really be that vertical threat. I've called for that. Blake Jarwin has been unfortunately unreliable over the past two seasons with the injury and stuff like that. And, I, and I'm not trying to be rude, but it is the honest-to-God truth. Um, you're kind of hoping that Sean McEwen could be that guy. But, I, you know, I have my hopes that he can. But, again, I would rather just go young, get a, another 21, going to be 22-year-old guy, you know, come this season, and you continue to go from there. So this was a very interesting draft, to say the least. Okay, so on the screen, you can see the results of this draft and 
more importantly, you know, as we get further along, you know, I will reference previous uh, mock drafts. So, you know, you kind of, and I don't want to spoil the last one if you haven't gone seen it, but it was kind of more of a stereotypical route, you know, given who was there. But this is going to be an off season where I'm not really concerned about who Dallas takes at 24. They can go edge. They can go really any direction. And I want to be upset with that. It's as long as it's a good player. And I think that we'll be fine. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go to the draft network, do your two round mocks and come back here and put in the comment section who you took with those first two picks and why. You know, um, I know that there are plenty of other prospects. I don't want it to make it seem like I'm narrow-minded or I'm just going after the hot names in the draft. But we have to consider that, look, when you get to those picks, some of those guys aren't going to be there. They're, it's not like I don't want these other guys. Like, there are plenty of guys I would like to have. But, again, I'm going through this simulation, and this is where we're at. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this little mock draft. I had some fun with it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already so you don't miss out on new content like this. Check out the last one to get a sense of where I'm feeling. And I'll see you guys in the next video, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.